Okay, so for the, your um, online version of the part of this class, you need to do the lathe template. So basically, after, we're going to start on the lathe here next. Um, so try to get this done during that time period. You're basically making a template like we did last time. Nothing fancy. This gives you a side. Don't don't put the dimensions on here, of course, on the outside. It tells you how big your rectangle is. You're just drawing. Um, you're just basically drawing a center line here and a line at three eighths up and three inches long. Okay, and that's going to represent half of the part that we're going to machine. And then you're going to have a zero, and you're going to label these. You can just do these with ordinate dimensioning, and double click on the dimension to change it to this text. Okay. These are done with just ordinate dimensioning. You do move your UCS by typing UCS and putting it at this point, okay? So it's very similar to the last one. Okay, so you can use your existing template if you want and just change a few things, um, new rectangle size. So you should all be able to more than capable of doing that. Um, it does give you a few instructions here. Um, your text would be set a little bit different, so we're going to use point one. I think it might be the same as before. This the um, dimension style is different though, so you type D for dimension style and change it to three decimal places and point three scale in the fit tab. Okay, um, everything else is pretty standard stuff. The other one you have to do. Is similar to what we did before at the beginning of the mill. A little practice should be easier this time. So I think it's this one here. I'll probably change the date on that to see your template. Test run, lab six test run. That's just so you get used to the software again. So you're going to be using. Um, for this, when you get into lathe, you'll be using CNC base for ProLite, okay? And that is a, um, a little bit different. Than this. It's the one that looks like a little lathe, okay? It actually looks like the lathe we have here. Make sure you pick that one. Okay, it's 3,000. I think this one's 1,000. Yeah, 1,000. This one's 3,000. So make sure you use that one, whether you downloaded it at home or whether you're using it here at school. It's, it's right next to the other one, okay? It, but it is slightly different for the lathe. Not much. So you're going to basically retype this and then troubleshoot it if you make any mistakes. So it runs you through how to do everything, okay? The only thing that's not in this list right here is you do have to download this works basic because that's up the right cutting bits and so forth like we did last time. So download this and open that workspace just like we've been doing in class before you start writing that program. And then just follow the instructions and make sure it works. It just cuts a nice simple part. Um, if you have an error, of course, just um, renumber it and troubleshoot it like you would in class. And those are the two that you have to kind of do on your own. Okay, and they're due next month or next Tuesday. Okay, so let's get started on programming the custom project that you guys are working on. Um, custom subroutines, okay? Hopefully you've all showed me your idea on it. Okay, so last week we focused on basically drawing it. This week we're going to focus on um, writing the program, okay? Which is not too bad. It's just you got to be able to flip the part again and change your G92, okay? So your G92 has a different Z value of 5.062 because we're using a half inch part with half inch spacer. Um, so we're going to start out about a uh, tenth of an inch above the part and we want to go down 0.15 and then back up in the subroutine to, to 0.15 instead of 0.2 like shown on the examples here. Okay. So we'll go through that here. Let me open up the file. Let's see here. The example was, I think this one, hopefully. Yep, so this is the example. And just focus on programming this one. There is no facing off, okay, because it's a, a flat piece of plexiglass or acrylic that we're going to be, be machining. We're basically going to be going in an eighth of a uh, point, point, 
0.05 deep is the idea of this. And you're start out 0.1 above it, okay? And you remember, you just go to the, this, these positions. So you should have a dimension similar to this one. This is an example. Yours should be different, of course, because it's custom. So I'm going to open that program. Okay, so all of our programs are going to be the same to start out with. So if you want to go ahead and open up your program and go ahead and work with me through it until um, yours changes at least. So right off the bat, we need to open that or download that workspace and open it before you start on anything else. So, oh, why did I open the lathe? I'm sorry, wrong one there. It's thinking too far ahead. So we're going. We're using the mill, of course. And it always opens the last one you did. Evidently, I was grading Jacob Beardays here. So, um, open workspace, and it should shut it off and turn it back on once you do that. Get mine. Now workspace, you should have downloaded that, remember, a while back in the first couple labs. And then it'll turn it off and turn it back on. Okay, now basically, remember, it sets up all the tools and everything. So you got to open workspace through that. Let's file open workspace, right? And download it from the previous labs. <coughs> And if you want to, you can align your windows. Don't turn any of these windows off. You'll need them, especially this one. It's used for troubleshooting. Now, the beginning of the program is the same as the other ones. So if you want to open one of your other programs to get the standard information in, go ahead and do that. So do file open. And we'll just delete some of the stuff we had before there. Okay, so your first information is still the same. You, know, you got your name on there with the semicolon initials, date. Um, so you want to change this. The, the first, this we're not doing machinable wax. So change that to three by three by half inch. Got to go to edit first and unlock it. Okay, three by three by half inch, and it is acrylic. Okay, or plexiglass. Plexiglass is a brand name caps lock on okay <clears throat> okay um, put your part number in there I should have I've signed that to you earlier um, let's see here so we do have a g90 in there make sure that g90 is in your code it's very important in this program so make sure you got it start out with absolute programming now we're going to be switching back and forth so we're, when we're in the subroutine, we're going to be using um, relative or incremental programming, okay? And in the main upper body, we're going to be using absolute program. So it'll get a little confusing, but just kind of, kind of remember where you're at in your program, okay? So all these say the same, M6201, we always want to start out with that, so make sure we got the right one in there, and then we home after that because our machines home don't home correctly unless they got this 201 in them because the other bits are longer. Um, the G92 has to change, okay? Remember that Z value. So in here it said change the G92 Z value to 5.062, okay? So where it says Z there on the G92, change that to, instead of 4.5, change it to 5.062. There was another number there too, wasn't there? No, 5.062, that's it. Okay, because it's it's a half inch thick on a half inch spacer, so it's basically an inch thick when we're when we're starting out. It gets us up, up to the top of the vise, and the wax is an inch and a half thick, so this it's a half inch um closer to the machine zero. Um, tool three, so we're going to be using the eighth of an inch bit. Um, I don't really remember which one it is, so I'm going to look here. Tool, select tool. 
tool two and eighth of an inch. Yeah. Yep, tool two is an eighth of an inch. Thank you. So we want to go M6 T2, not T3. Okay. And I think we do want to run 2,000 RPM. He opened another window here. Okay, so this is the example okay, of, of the program. So I'm going to be doing very similar to one to that. <clears throat> um, yes, it is tool two, so that's an eighth. If you want to add a little bit of text to that. Pull my panels over here so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. I'm going to add a little text to that, put a semicolon after it and basically say eighth of an inch bit. Just kind of remind me. Okay. <clears throat> this one changed the speed. Okay, so to 2000, which is right. Now we want to go to, we're going to the same position we usually go to, um, close to it at least. So we usually we go right to the corner, but we're not doing that this time. We're going to go to the first spot that we are going to do something. So now this right away, this will be different on yours. Okay, so on the heart, you want to go to basically right to this position right above it okay now wherever your first position is on your your drawing that you made that's where you're going to want to go okay mine is 0.725 in the x and 0.333 in the y okay so i would change my x value to match that let's write this thing up so i can see it make sure i'm in the right place here so my x make sure you don't flip flop your x and y a lot of students seem to be doing that. Always kind of easy to make that mistake. And the Y is 0 0.333. Okay. So that's the first position I go. And I am going to go an eighth of an inch above it. Okay. Or 0 0.1 above it, not quite an eighth. Now right away, I think that's basically it. After that, you're going to delete everything else off there. If you want to, if you're using a program that has the M0 for flipping the part, you could keep those those numbers in there if you want to. But um, otherwise, get rid of all the rest of this, all the way down to the um, go to a safe position. All right. So I'm going to delete all that stuff to go down to a safe position now from that point on. Let's see, where am I at? Yep. Okay, so I hit the delete key and get rid of that. And I'm going to put a bunch of spaces in there so I know where I'm at. Okay. So basically, I, I went to this spot here in high speed with G0. And then these are the end of the end of the program. Now, one thing to notice here on your end of your program, so M2 end of program, right? So sometimes I, I see a lot of people try to put their subroutines inside the main program. That's not where it goes. It goes after the M2 end of program, okay? Because it'll jump down. And remember the the P and the O send it back and forth there, okay? Let's go back through that instruction just real quick here too. In the lesson there. We'll come back in here in a second, just so I can kind of reiterate that since it's been a week. So in subroutines, they're not as bad as they sound. They're, kind of, they're just like the can cycles, okay, which we did a little bit of. So um, <clears throat> this is the line you write, basically, when you're ready to do a subroutine. And M98 says, calls it out, says, that I'm a subroutine. P500 means go to the go to the subroutine named numbered 500, 500 and that finds it finds what finds an O, not a zero, an O with a 500, and that's the one it goes to. Now you can give it 300, 200, 100, six, whatever number you want, as long as they match. That's all that matters. And this is how many times it repeats. We're not going to do any repeats. So we'd leave that part off. Okay. Now it's going to go down to the O O100, and the first thing when you get down to O100 is you go G91 which puts it in incremental programming. That's the code that says go to incremental. So we can use basically relative distances from one point to the other and not um, absolute. Because if you notice in this drawing, there is no, it's not based on zero, zero. It's based on from here to there. Okay, so that's why we gotta use incremental. How far is it in the X? How far is it in the Y? When we go left, it's negative. When we go down, when we go left, it's negative in the X. When we go down, it's negative in the Y. Otherwise, it's positive, okay? And this is an example of, of the program, okay? So we've got all those first codes done, and, and we get we do have to drop, 
Um, the next line we're going to be putting in is basically this one. Okay, and then we'll, we'll go down to the subroutine. Notice it's after the M02 in the program. We call it an 0500G91, and then we write the code for it. And then the last two lines we write are these two to go back up and change it back to absolute programming with the G90. And the M99 says, okay, get back up there to the line right after the, the P, P500, which that'll be your next XY position. Okay, it'll say G0 go there. Okay, so let's look at the example program now. <clears throat> okay, so we are sitting right here, our first position. Now we need to call out our subroutine. So I use 300 in this example, so I'll use it again. Okay, so I'm just going to call that um, M98, which will be exactly the same on this line, and P300 or whatever number you want to use. It's got to be consistent, okay? <clears throat> and now at this point, you go down here after the program and write your, write your little program for that heart or whatever you're doing, a triangle or whatever, which one you pick, okay? So this becomes... Just like down here, the O three hundred. Okay, so you have to go. I'm at the end of the pro. I'm after the end of the program here. I'm going to type an O, not a zero, three hundred. And this will not get numbered when you um renumber the program. When you do edit renumber to do the troubleshooting, it will not renumber. Okay, so it's not supposed to either. It doesn't get a number put on it. <clears throat> and this is the start of the subroutine. And you can put G ninety one right on there if you want, or you can put on the next line. Either way is fine. I think over here in the lesson, I actually put it on the same line. Yep. We'll do that again. And now you start writing the program for it, okay? So so now it's, now you're in absolute, or I mean you're in relative. So the first thing you got to do is drop down into the part because we start out above the part by 0.1 right here, right? Now this example, I went down point, um, negative 0.2, but I, we broke a lot of bits when we went that deep. So that's why I've changed it to point a negative 0.15, which basically says, okay, I'm up 0.1, and I'm going down um, 0.15, so I'm actually only going in 0.05, okay, so let's put that in there, all right, so that'll be G1, okay, and your line will be exactly the same here, Z negative 0.15, which will drop at 0.05 into the part, okay, and it has nothing to do with the X, Y, Z being zero anymore. Now it's from where you're at to where you're going. Okay, we're going to be going straight down point, point oh 0.05, which is different than what we've done in the past. We always went to the absolute number. Okay, and now this is the first um, cutting code we're writing. So we need to put F10 in there, which will get repeated a bunch of times since it's a subroutine, but that doesn't really hurt anything. Okay, so it's going to go to F10, which basically means um, go 10 inches per minute. All right. Now that now we're in sitting in the part, now we're going to start writing the code for the for the your your object. Now I'm just going to write a couple lines and move on. So the, my first one would be basically going from here to here. Okay. So now I look over at this one here, and I, you got to pick a direction. You can go either way, but I'm I usually go you know around clockwise. Okay, because it cuts a little bit better that way with the, with the bit turning um, clockwise. So so I'm going to go negative. Remember it's incremental. This, so I'm going from here to here, so I need to put 379 on mine. Now, yours will be different at this point. Okay, so this is another G1. It's cutting, so I'm not going to type G1. I'm just going to leave it out. So my X, negative 0.379, okay? And then I'm going to change, put my Y in there to my Y. It's going up. It's 0.459. So 0.459. And notice I put a negative on the X because it was going left, Okay. And then I would continue to write this thing. The next one would be up for this one. It'd be a G2 since it's clockwise. It'd be a G2 to this point right here, which is um, 0.37. I'll write that one too. This so thing can just see a circle. So that would be G2, and that's the last one I'll write. And this one is um, going to the right now. So it's the op opposite direction. So it's, it isn't a negative 0.379. Okay, and it's going up 0.335. So Y... 0.335, and you got to have a radius since it's a G2. The radius, remember, is on the center line of, of our travel. 0.253 is my radius of this heart. Now, yours is different, of course, but it's the same idea, all right? Now, I'd continue to write that all the way around, okay, until I got it all the way done. And then the last codes are you've got to go back up however much you went down. Okay, now if you're wanting to do something fancy like put a point on it, 
you can always taper out to um, um, go up like 0.05 and it'll come out. It's a ball nose bit, so it'll actually make a point if, if you go 0.05 back up. Okay, it'll actually go to a point. So if you want to get really or technical on your drawing, you could do that. That's a little bit tricky, but I have had several students be successful with it. So, so now I got to go back up. Okay, you get back out of the park after I write the whole heart. Okay, I'm just I'm shortcutting it here in, in the video, but you write the whole heart. So that would be a G. It could be a G zero because it's not going to be cutting anything. When you're getting back out. You're just going straight up. Z of 0.15. Okay, so it's going back up. C of 0.15. Okay, now I did this two in here in the example, but this this year we're doing it less, so you'll break it in many bits. Okay. And then we gotta go back to absolute programming, because in the main program it's absolute. Okay, so G90 so brings it back to absolute. And then M99 says get back up there. Get back up there to the main, to the to the next line right below the last one you did. Okay. Alright, so this subroutine will be called out over and over until I do four hearts. Or however many hearts I got there. I don't know, maybe there's five. So the next line up here, now I'm back up to the main program. The next line is, is sitting there at the end of, in, end of the heart, okay? Imagine I pro programmed this whole heart so right here, okay? Did the first one at this position. So now I gotta go to the next one. I could go to this one or this one or this one. It really don't matter. I'll pick this one, I guess. So it's, um, it's all the way down and we're back to absolute programming now, not relative. So, it's for, so you can type in these numbers. So I'm going to here, so back up to the main program, and it's just high speed, G0, which I was in G0 before, so I theoretically could leave that out, but since I'm switching from back and forth in programs, I'm gonna type it in just so I know I'm in G0 there, because you don't wanna go slow. And the X value is, and it should be the same, it shouldn't be moving, but I'm gonna type that in too, just so I help me troubleshoot, since I'm going back and forth between programs. You could leave the X out and the G0 file, just type Y, theoretically, it should work, 1.8, 37 is a Y and the Z staying the same. Okay. And then after that, I just type another P300. Okay. Or M98 P300. Sorry. M98 P300. And that's going to go back down here and run the same program all over again. That's going to come back up here. And then you're going to type the next number in. The next number would be whatever one I pick next. I guess I'll pick the 1.5 one next. So you don't have to rewrite this because you only write in the program one time. That's the beauty of a subroutine. It can keep repeating it. So that's going to be a x 1.5 y 1.109. I remember yours, of course, different, but I just basically came up here to the next one that I'm going to do. I'm going to do the middle one that time. And then I go back down and I do the same thing, M98 P, P300, and it's going to go back down there and run that program again and come back up. Okay, so after you get all that one done five times, okay, then you got to flip the part, okay? So that should be right in here. Your code to be identical to this one on flipping the part. Okay, but same as that. All right, so type the, type those in there after you're all done. So it looks like I've got to do um. Oh, you've got to be able to get your hand in there and flip it, right? So it's actually from here. <clears throat> those lines there are your flipping of the part, so you get on the back side of it, okay? <clears throat> so I would type in, I'd probably put a note in there to start to help myself out here, flipping part. Okay. <clears throat> and then I'd just type G0, Z2, and that brings me um, up to the safe position. If I get to get my hand in there, that's the whole idea there. Okay, I'm going to bring it up two inches high. Okay, and then I'm going to basically go on M5, that spindle off. I'm going to show that spindle off. Okay. And then basically I'm going to type an M0, which just, just halts the machine for a little bit. So that's an M0, right? And that's um, machine stop. Just stops the machine. Okay. And then I'm going to type in M3S2000. That's going to turn it back on. So it won't take back off with an M0 until you hit the enter. I think the F5 or run again. You might have to hit the little run icon on the machine and, it, and then it'll fire back up. It'll sit there until you do that. So you do have to turn the spindle back on or it can't cut anything, right? It's very important to put that in there. 2000 and that spindle on. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And then you're back to the same thing. Now you're writing the other one. So it's flipped over now and it's just a repeat. Except instead of using P300, you use P400 or P2 or P something different. Oh, and the same matching O. So the next number is go to, go to that next spot. So 
Now I would go over to my hearts, and I, or my diamonds in this case, and start paying attention to that one. Okay, so I need to get to this position next time. So let's make sure I didn't forget any codes here. So I did that. Yep, it's a G0 to that position next. So I'm going to go to this one, which is 675 and 250. So make sure you stay in the right place of the program. I'm right after the flipping part. So now it's, I might put a note in here to help myself out. This is diamonds. Okay. And you can do the same thing with your program to kind of help you troubleshoot it later. You know, like this one up here, let's put a note up there if I want to and call that hearts. Okay. I'll only put a semicolon in there, it turns green. It won't do anything. It just, it's just note, notes for you in the future. Somebody troubleshooting this later. So this is high speed, so G0 because I'm not in the part. And I go to X. I'm doing the diamond one, X675, comma. Or not comma, these in AutoCAD mine here. Y and 0.25. Okay, now remember we're still in absolute in the main program, and I double desk will place that. Okay, and then right after that, it's the same as up here by the hearts was. It's M98, just like you did before, and it's just different numbers. So I'm gonna call it, I don't know, P301. Pick a number, okay? See how I match it below. And then I go down here and I write my program again. And it's basically just like this one. I'll probably just copy that change a few things. I don't know if that's a waste of time or not, but we'll see here. Get rid of lines that are going to change, which are the, that one's different. That one's different. And this becomes 301 because I changed the number. Okay, but all the rest is the same. It's going to go down that far speed. I could leave the speed off this time because it's already set. <clears throat> um, and it goes back up, so the coding's in between here is what's different. All right, so now I've got to go from here to here. So now I've got to go over to my incremental area. Oh, and this one is pretty simple. They're all the same. Going left again, so it's X. It is a G1. Oh, no, I'm not ready in G1. So it's X negative 0.325. Okay, and then Y positive 0.563. Okay, now I just type in the rest of those. Okay, when you get that all done, and you just write the rest of the program, and, and then up here, you do the same thing for the diamonds. You type by the next position once it's done. So this becomes the next position over, which is, I guess I'll go same idea to 6751624. So this becomes X.675, and again, maybe leave that off. It should directly work, 1.624. Let me type this there. So I went up to my second position. And then I just repeat it down here again, M98, P301. It's going to keep on going back down to the other one. I, and down here, I type the next number, the X, whatever it is, okay? All right, then we, once you get them all in there, all five of them in this case, you test it and run it. So I'm going to do edit, renumber, so I can troubleshoot it decent, do it, okay? And then I'm going to try it, see how many mistakes I made. Got to pick optional skip on the virtual machine. When the actual machine... You will not pick optional skip if you're doing machining on the real machine, okay? Because it, it's uh, it's skipping the G28 and G92 because that slash is in there, okay? It's, it looks up for that slash and skips it because the virtual machine doesn't have that. All right, let's see how many errors I made here. Verify program changes to a one. That's good. Changes to a two. That's good. Does I only did three of them, so you can see it's working. Um, now it stopped. On M0 down here at the bottom, see my machine info it stopped down there. It says machine stopped, so it's waiting for me to tell it again. So this time I would open up the machine and put my hand in there. It should be off. Make sure I did all that right. Flipping part, spindle off. Yeah, spindle's off. Don't stick your hand in there, that spindle's going. All right, spindle will be off, and then it, it will, shouldn't let you in anyway. It should stop the machine. Um, <clears throat> then basically we'd flip the part and then we'd then we'd hit the green button and it would more than 32 at one again I don't like that I jumped up to N36 okay I forgot to tell it to go down so I ran it on, well, I did, I said go down to 1.5, back up, I should have put a slot. 
Is it in the same spot? It might be in the same spot as the other one. I think it's over the top of it so you can't see it. But it should run the second program and then it should go to the end of program and say it's finished. Okay. I'll check that out, but I think this line is running into the other one. Maybe that might be why you can't see it, but I'll troubleshoot that and figure out what's going on. But it should be showing up the second one right off the top of it. Okay. And remember, it's flipped, so it'd be a, it should be a, it's going to be a mirror image as, as you look through the part. Okay. Because it's made of glass. Hopefully, that makes it halfway easy for you guys to program it. Um, yours should be similar. Uh, if you have any problems, let me know.